Okay, so I hope I'm doing this right because I was hoping someone was gonna go. When I, 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 it seems scary to not have someone to watch tell the story first, like in yoga class or something, when you just watch the other people. But uh, I, my regret story is, <laughs> my regret is, um, I've, I've always thought of it as like the. Um, the moment of my life where definitively things could have gone a different way and changed the course of my life. And even before I was asked to do this, I've thought, this is like a moment I think about definitely weekly, maybe daily. And it happened when I was in sixth grade. And um, in my junior high, like sixth grade, start, junior high started at sixth grade. And so, and I, and so I started sixth grade, went to the school the first day. I looked really cute. I was wearing a guest miniskirt and a guest jean jacket and I had this gold locket of my cocker spaniel dog around my neck. I was like super adorable. My hair was like straight then. Like it just nat I was just like it, it was like childhood straight and it had like a little flip at the end. It was like all going really really well so far. Like entering adolescence and then I went to all the classes and the last class of the day was Spanish and there was this boy in the class and he had a flat top haircut and he was a skater, and his like knees were all messed up, like from falling off the skateboard, and it was like covered in band aids. And I loved him so much, and like I just chose. I was like, I choose him. I love him. And then we, the class ended, and we left the class, and I like dropped my books because I'd seen like on Wonder Years, like if you drop your books, so I dropped my books, and he like picked them up, and he like as he picked them up, like our eyes locked, and he asked me my name, and it was just like all fell into place, and I was like. It's just all going to work out. Like, everything's going to work out. Like, bo meeting boys are going to work out, and adulthood's going to work out, and this is the path of my life. Like, I'm just going to choose boys, and they're going to like me, and it just is going to be fantastic. And then the next day, because, um, like, there was this carryover group. I had, like, you know, like 20 best friends, of course, girls. And there had been this drama that carried over from fifth grade, because the power couple of fifth grade, Amy and Vance, had broken up and they were like both they were the power couple and they were also the tallest equally tall and so it was clear like their place on the hierarchy and so all like this 20 the circle of 20 girl best friends had like gathered to discuss like how to get Amy and Vance back together and I was sent as like the littlest to mediate with, with Vance about like to you know, talk to him about how to get back together with Amy so I was like we gathered in one part of the playground and then I was sent to like the like the basketball court like out in the open unprotected to go talk to Vance and he came up brought Travis with him and and I just remember so vividly like the shadow of these two boys like just looking at them and in my mind it's like torso I just see these like two torsos and I and I'm just engulfed by the shadow and I was trying to talk to Vance about Amy and then Vance pointed to Travis and said um, he likes you and it was like the moment, and it caught me so off guard because I hadn't quite thought it was going to happen that quickly and that there was going to be this other thing, person involved. And I didn't say anything. And I just said something else about Amy. I didn't say anything to Travis. And I walked back to my, and I can even remember, like I remember seeing like the mean, the best, of course they were mean, they were girls. So like I remember just seeing these 20 girls like kind of staring at me. And I do think that played a role in like my not talking to Travis then. I think they're like, glaring kind of at me but I didn't say anything they left and like I had to like compose my thoughts I went home and I wrote like a love letter to Travis telling him like obviously I accept your love and this is you know now it's all gonna start it's gonna be good it's all worked out and it was like a letter like I typed it on a typewriter <laughs> and like typed it all out put it in an envelope like sealed it like not like a not like it wasn't like sealed with wax it was probably like one of my dad's like his office envelopes, you know, like I went up to the office, like opened up like the filing cabinet, got like one of those office deep, or like home depot, like, well, I don't even know what, whatever Spencer's gifts envelopes that existed then, and like put it in, folded it, and I went to school the next day to give it to Travis, and he'd already moved on to this girl, Elise, who was really tall and like modeled in like JCPenney catalogs, and even now when I look at her on the internet, she was actually pretty, she wasn't just pretty, that, like she was actually gorgeous, it wasn't just like we didn't know what gorgeous was then, it turned out she was and so and I it was over and I didn't 
I didn't talk to Travis for the entire three years. Like, three years we went to school together, and I pined for him and loved him. And the moment had totally passed, and I realized that... And, like, the thing is, like, I know we wouldn't have... We would have lasted, like, two weeks, but it would have been long enough to establish us as some sort of power couple and also to, <laughs> also to have been, like... Like, I think it would have just set in my mind this idea of, like, I just choose and I get this. And I, like, this, the empowerment that would have come from it, I think, would have been so intoxicating. And instead, like, the, the, like, I was already such a little pessimistic kid. And I feel like knowing that exactly what you most fear does happen. <laughs> and, like, and, like, the long, it set, it just made me, it preconditioned me to be this whole other person when I could have been, like, this effortless girl who was probably who I probably would have, like, gone to school for communications or something and not been that interesting, but I would have been, like, really... Like, I would have been in this happy relationship and it would have been easy. And I've thought about it all the time. I even, like, I went to this writer's colony and I was telling, like, the director of the colony and about this... Like, I tell everybody. And then we did, like, this reenactment with a photographer where we had real high school kids <laughs> play Travis and do the thing. And I was, like, oh, like, the kid who was playing Travis, I was, so, I was as tongue-tied around. Like, it's so traumatizing. And the thing that makes it horrible is I can't even... Like, I know that Travis is a loser now. Like, I went to school with such losers, and I know that he is, and he's... And I can't find him online, which, obviously, he's a... He, you, if you're not online at this point, if there is no trace of you anywhere, like, nothing. Like, his life must be so horrible. And, like, <laughs> but I just... I need the closure, and so I can't find him. And it doesn't make me... It should make me feel better knowing that he's just a wreck of a person. <laughs> and I am such good Google, and he is such horrible Google, but it doesn't, it, it haunts me, and I'll never get over it. Because um, he might still be cute, he could be horrible, but cute too, and that's the problem. Um, but anyway, so that's my regret.